So this is going to be a long video. This is going to cover a number of things when hunting your dog. With a young dog, a Springer Spaniel, a Cocker Spaniel, a Clumber, a dog that quarters in front of you, nice and tight, we want it to begin with. If you've got it hunting tight, 15 feet one side, 15 foot the other side, 15 foot in front, that's quite an area you're covering. And you might think, oh, hang on, I could kick stuff up in this area but trust me that dog will open up to double that once it gets on game and you've trained it and I think what people were thinking last night on the live feed was 15 foot 15 foot that way and 15 foot that way and 15 foot out in front that's not really hunting but if you've got a game finder you have to school it and show it where you want it to hunt and then when it comes across scent it will take the line and pull out onto it but it's got to be within gunshot. And that's the most important thing. If you're a shooting man and you know that if a bird gets up 40 yards in front of you, by the time you've raised your gun, it's 50, 60 yards, then you're gonna wingtip it. You're gonna just, you're just gonna clip it, you're gonna damage it, but you're not gonna kill it. You're looking for a clean kill. Now, some good guns can kill stuff at long ranges and the more you get used to training and the more you get used to shooting over dogs, you can allow that bird to go on a little bit further to give the dog a better retrieve, a longer retrieve. But Chris is giving you a fine example here of where the dog should be at this age before you go on a shoot. Your dog should be around you and not hunting 40 yards through the woods. Now, when Sol was going on about last night about um, he could kick birds out, He's not working Spaniels, he's not working, he's working GSPs. Now GSPs are a different thing to, altogether. And then someone else came on and was asking about pointing. You don't want these dogs to point on game. You want them to hunt with a nose down, going nice and pacey like this little bitch here. And then when they come across game, they go up a gear. They, you can read them, they go up a gear and they, they open up a little bit. And that's where we talk about a game finder, a hunting machine. Right, a, a dog that finds game, that it's not just coming across game because the pattern is so windscreen wiper action. Chris is allowing this dog to do the hunting, but he's controlling the dog on the whistle. And in this video, I tell him to stop using the whistle now because he's got that nice tight pattern on that dog in front of him. He's not going to miss nothing. If he goes out shooting, the dog's going to cover the ground because it's staying within the range. And the camera gives the impression that the dog's hunting further out than it is. It's not. What's happening is the dog's hunting where Chris wants it to hunt, and he's using the whistle to condition it. Now, the environment plays a big part. The environment plays a big part because where you want that dog to hunt is important. Because if it's in thick cover, it's got to stay in tighter. If it's in open woodland like this, you can get it to open up a little bit more. But you'll find game if you've got a dog hunting the way Chris's dog was hunting there. So I think one of the questions was, is where should the dog be hunting in the beating line when out beating? Well, it all depends on the cover crop you're in, um, or the or the or the woods, or the you know, all depends on the environment you're hunting that dog. But that dog is busy in front of Chris and happy to hunt there. I guarantee that dog gets on game. It's going to pull and show him this game there. And this is where people don't understand this. They think a dog can cover a lot more distance. But then the dog's chasing before you know it. Because you haven't got the control. Now you could say, hang on, that's because you're a trialer, Chris. And that's why you like a dog hunting close. I don't miss much out when I'm shooting. Because my dogs aren't reasonably close. But I'm not. A control freak there's not a windscreen wiper action on this dog she's going through the motions of hunting and Chris is letting the dog do the hunting and he would be doing the shooting at the end of the day if you watch what the dog's doing it's in an open woodland and the dog is staying within that area and trust me I've been there done it read the book if your dog is hunting like this when it gets on game it'll open up to nearly double this when it finds game and that's where you want it to produce game within that area. So if you produce game there where, where the dog was right next to Chris, he'd have to let it go before shooting it. But guess what? If it finds close in, it'll stay close in. So you condition it that way on purpose. 
So going back to if you're in the beating line and you're going through a woods like this and your little dog is doing this and flushing bird after bird after bird and not missing nothing, you're doing a good job and this is where your dog should be. So, you know, when I say 15 feet, well, it could be 20 feet either side of you. It depends on the dog. If it's a racy driven dog, you might want to keep it in tight in certain situations. So the whistle is the tool that you use. And if you condition the dog to turn on the whistle, that's exactly what you get when you go out in the field with the dog in on the real stuff. Like Chris said, once he got on the real stuff, the dog went up another gear and it showed him why it was so important to keep that dog tight and like she was there. And that was lovely. You don't need no more than 10 minutes of that. Then give the dog a break and then start again. And that's the important thing when hunting these dogs. If you're in a beating line, it lasts about 15, 20 minutes at the most, doesn't it? In, 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 from one drive to the next drive. You don't want to take your dog out and just run it and run it and run it because it'll learn to open up and take lines. And so what we're saying is if you ever come across a clump of cover and the dog's not gone in it, Chris, make sure the dog does go in it because you're conditioning the dog that there could be stuff in cover. And so then the dog goes in the cover. But this is where you train the dog to turn when you want it to turn. And it's, it's lovely to watch. This is the ultimate temptation. Open woodland, not much cover. But if you can keep your dog tight in this, wait till you get in the woods where there is game and they're sitting tight under everything. Your, your dog's going to excel and show the quality of your training. And that's what this is about. This is, this is, there's a bit of scent in this wood. We get the odd bird in this wood, but this time of year, there's not 30, 40 birds running through here. But the idea is, is the dog hunting or is the dog looking at the handler for guidance? No, he wants to do less handling guidance and let the dog flow. And the dog's flowing lovely because what I've said to him is back off the whistle now and let trust the dog. And the dog will open up a little bit more, but the dog's turning because he's conditioned that dog to turn time and time again with the consistency of his training. Now he can sort of back off and use the turn whistle when he really needs it. And the dog will respond very sharp to that turn whistle rather than boring the dog every 10 15 seconds or seven seconds blowing that whistle to turn the dog he's conditioned that dog to be with him and enjoy the game and that's what this is all about everyone that little dog is happy doing what it's doing and if he hasn't got it to this standard at this point if you go on a shoot and your dog's pulling you all over the place your dog will be out of sight doing what so many other dogs do running in after game and disappearing over the hill you've got to keep them reasonably tight and that's what this is about. It's about education. It's about helping people. Now, when I do a live feed and people ask me questions, I come up with quick answers because I can't stand there or sit there for an hour and talk about one subject. So I give you an idea. I give you an idea, but the videos give you an informative view of why we do what we do and how we train. So Chris has got this dog just right, and it's a fine example to use. If you watch me with my dogs in the woods, they're a lot, they're, 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 they're nice and tight uh, compared to a lot of people's dogs that are taking in too much ground. Then we have to start schooling them to get them back. That's harder than doing what Chris has done here and condition that dog to hunt that sort of 15 to 20 feet either side of him, 20 feet out in front. By the time you get your gun up, the bird's gone double the distance if you're a shooting person. So you don't want the dog taking in too much ground. The same as going down a hedge. You don't want that hot, that dog going more than sort of 25 feet down the hedge line because by the time the bird gets up, you, you're just stabbing at it. So it's better to have that dog hunting down the hedge line near you so when the bird comes out, it gives you time to shoot. It gives you time to adjust and look for the safe shot instead of so many people stab at these birds. And that's what happens when you're out shooting with people who don't know what they're doing. A good gun can let a bird go and shoot it because the dog flushes it. With, see, look, he's using too much hand signal there, look. But it, I told him, look, because the dog was right with him. The dog was right with him. That's it. He asked the dog to go in there because a little bit more cover. So what happens is a stick pile there. We want that dog to go into that stick pile because that's where birds will sit. When the dog starts to go in the stick pile without being told, you know you've conditioned your dog well. So it's a fine example of Chris showing you the hunting. And that's what it's about. It's about showing you how to get a dog hunting in different terrain. And the different terrain is really important because the terrain adjusts, you should adjust your hunting towards the terrain you're in. So if you're in 
if you're rabbit shooting and you're in, in thick rushes or reeds, reed beds or anything like that, wet bottoms or anything like that, that dog's going to hunt tighter because the rabbits will sit tight. Where in the woods here, the rabbits will run, run not the rabbits, the pheasants will run forward and leave a trail and the dogs will pull onto them and be doing straight lines after the pheasants if you don't condition the dog with, a, with what we call within, within gunshot range. But what we're not doing here is artificially having a windscreen wiper action that a dog is really flat right at your feet. Now, some trainers train that way. Some judges will knock you if your dog isn't doing that. I'm a, I'm a, I, when I judged, I like to see a dog hunting. I like to see a dog that was keen. It didn't bother me if you were blowing the whistle if the dog was that driven and you were controlling it and it was responding to the whistle. Where I'd knock you is if you're blowing the whistle and the dog's not turning and coming across you within what we call making good ground treatment. The ground treatment is so important because I've been out before in the early days and let the dog open up too much and missed a bird. And the judge just said, stand still, poked his stick in the ground and said, sorry, there's a bird there. You learn by those mistakes. You realise how tight game sits in especially artificial situation, like on a shoot where they've been reared like that instead of wild. A wild bird is a completely different, that will sit tight and then it will, it will, bolt so much quicker it will come out but they sit so so much tighter where some of these tamer birds are running because they've been pushed through the woods time and time again and all they're doing is leaving a scent trail in front of the dog and all the dog is using its nose and pulling onto them so this here is the ideal situation where the dog you want the dog to be look this is an ideal video for you to watch and see the distance in this sort of environment where you want that dog flowing now, some people will say that's not really hunting. Watch this dog on game, you'll see a different dog, right? We're going through the motions. We're just conditioning that dog to flow in front of us, not look at us, not become sticky, not be scared of getting into a flush and having a flush. There you go. Want that dog to hit that stick pile there. If you don't hit the stick pile, there could be a bird sitting there. So there you go. So I told Chris to make sure you cover your stick piles because if you don't cover those stick piles, that's where the bird will sit. You've got to think like, if I was a bird, where would I be for cover? So it could have run into there. But I'm watching the dog all the time. I'm visually watching the dog. And you can see them come across scent and, and you know they're going to produce game by watching the dog and reading the dog. The dog's just going through the motion at the moment of hunting within that area that Chris has schooled that dog. And it's a beautiful video for other people to watch and think that's what I want to achieve with my young dog before I go on a shoot. If your dog is taking in double this distance, I guarantee it'll be taking in double the distance again when it gets on the shoot and it's had a few days on the shoot and it knows what the, what the score is. At the moment, Chris is still schooling this dog and it's two years of age. But a wonderful example uh, of, of, of nice calm control and leadership at the right time this is what you're seeing you're seeing a handler and a dog working as one so we've asked him to throw a retrieve out and leave that retrieve and hunt on so the dog's got to leave that not pull on to it and look what the dog's doing straight away it's not interested in the dummy it saw the dummy out there it's not trying to pull towards the dummy he's listening the dog is listening to him it tells me so much about the partnership between the man and dog if the dog kept pulling towards the dummy, it shows me the partnership is too one-sided. That the dog's, there you go, the dog looked at that look, but came straight back in, beautiful. And we're getting the dog to go through that little bit of extra cover. And the dog's enjoying itself. And then in, in a minute, we'll turn the dog around and we'll send the dog back for the retrieve. And this is what it's all about when you go out training with a trainer who knows what he's talking about who's been shooting over dogs for over 30 odd years. And at the end of the day, I'm competition in dogs as well as rough shooting. I love rough shooting. It's, it's one of the finest sports you can do. Away from the madding crowd, one man and his dog. But when you've got another man and a good dog, it's an asset to have two guys out together, training or shooting, having fun. But there's nothing worse than a dog taking straight lines after birds and birds getting up in the woods and you're not be able to get a shot on them. 
look at the control he's got look, look, look how sharp it is look how the dog goes out there everything is clean everything is exactly what we want and at the end of the day this doesn't happen overnight you've got to work at it everyone you've got to work at it look at it look the dog picked it up he gave the dog that nice little touch look to say well done and that was nice to watch wasn't it and then back to the hunting look so we bring the retrieving into the hunting we can do the retrieving separate the hunting separate and then start bringing it together and if you've done it right the dog loves the retrieving as much as the hunting how many times do you see the dogs going out hunting lovely drive on them and then you throw out a retrieve and they go over to it sniff it and go that's just a boring canvas dummy i'm not picking it it's the balance getting the balance together so what i'm saying is how, how to get that dog's head down and hunting sharper so what i said is pretend you've got a tennis ball there look at that and, and just do it on the odd occasion don't do it all the time but look out all of a sudden the dog's put its head down and went i missed that i missed that because chris said what's this what's this and the dog he, i said rub the ball on the floor when you come in pick it up show the dog the ball and what happens look how it tightens the dog up and gets the head down even more right look how tight the dog goes with the head action it's like it's, it's so much tighter look and better now you don't want a dog tight all the time but look at the dog now it's saying ah there could be something else here there could be something else here i'm going to i'm going to search this even more thorough it's making that dog work harder for the find and that's what he's doing the dog is hunting to try and have a find right whether and, and chris hasn't had the dog on many birds but look look at this it's lovely isn't it to watch this is this is exactly when you watch the trial people on the videos on, on the paul french videos and stuff like this this is where the cockers are hunting cockers will hunt tight they're little dogs but they've got that extra zest in them that that really makes them look something special when you get them right and they and they're hunting nicely like this little cocker this cocker's not going like a maniac but it's covering the ground it doesn't want to miss nothing look at that that's beautiful because we're concentrating on just putting the polish on the dog with the tuition that i'm giving chris that's that extra little bit of tuition that he perhaps hasn't had because he's been training on the videos look at it look. he asked the dog to, to sit look look he threatened the dog just slightly that's all he needed to do that was absolutely lovely well done chris so as we're driving down the road we saw a cockbird run into here so we put the dog and chris straight onto that scent and let the dog take the line then we asked chris to get the dog back and she didn't come back straight away so i said get after her and just threaten her at the movement and i said put the dog on the long line on, not on the line on the lead and give a leash tug and say come here because the dog went after the bird the bird bird flushed no problem but then as soon as that happened the dog should have come back to chris so in a game environment that's when you put the dog under more pressure and show and, and, and the dog can take it because you've gone through the motion of the training and now you're putting the dog on the real stuff and so that's what happens in the same situation here some days there's two or three four birds in here and we're pushing this back for the keeper and at the end of the day sometimes it's fantastic when it gets a little bit thinner it's easier but chris is now going to work the dog in this little bit of bracken and this dog's going to stay within gunshot but learn how to flow in here it's not easy to begin with for youngsters but the dog's enjoying it and there's very little whistle with chris and the dog's flowing in front of you and you can see the cover move half the time when you're in this sort of cover this thick um, this high up for a little dog you just have to rely on watching the cover move in front of you it's important the dog doesn't go screaming on taking straight lines down here but look at the dog it's all round him and yet could it open up more here yes but that will come with experience that will come with experience the dog will pick up a better understanding of how to cover this and the dog will, will work out what scent is in here but this is where we school them um, in these small areas for 10 minutes to say come on I'm going to give you a different sort of cover to, to work out and this little dog's having to climb underneath this and work and work and learn how to work scent underneath this unfortunately we never came across anything some days you go down here some mornings and like I say there's five or six birds here and we're pushing them back onto the estate for the keeper so that's what they allow us to do and that's how we can get onto some game um, but this time of year and I think they've put the birds out later this year um, because they're nowhere near the birds that there has been years gone by 
but it's still a good training here because there will be scent and as you can see the dog is enjoying itself like and that's what it's about everyone. Down. Any point you want to stop the dog? Send the dog. Get on. Stop the dog. Lovely. Good. Push the dog back for it. So everything about that last clip was beautiful. Dog's hunting, blew the stop whistle nice and gently, quietly, and the dog stopped. Looked instantly at Chris. Chris threw the retrieve. When I said send the dog, he sent the dog in a nice calm manner and the dog raced out there. When I asked him to blow the stop whistle, the dog stopped, spun round, looked at him, and then he pushed the dog back when I told him. Perfection comes with consistency, repetition, and the dog enjoying what it's doing. That's what these videos are about, everybody. Well done, Chris. Fine example of how to train a dog.